Sunday, January 31st, 2021, Septuagesima Sunday, Morning Meditation. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choice is Teacher in Moral Theology, Act of Faith in the Presence of God. In nomine Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God in three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win, act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, pana dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or Pernobis peccatoribus, nuc nehor mortis nostrae. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray Gloria Patria, Filio, Spiritu Sancto, Sicud Erat in Principio, Nuc et Semper, and Secula, Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit. It shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. He sent them into his vineyard. Matthew 10. The Lord's vines are our souls, which he has given us to cultivate by good works, that one day we may be admitted into eternal glory. Many live as if they were never to die, or as if they had not to give to God an account of their lives, as if there were no heaven and no hell. They believe, but they do not reflect. They take all possible care of worldly affairs, but to attend not to salvation of their souls. O my God, what shall my lot be? If I may be lost, why do I, why do I not embrace such a life as may secure for me eternal life? St. Paul says, quote, We entreat you, brethren, that you do your own business. 1 Thessalonians 4.10 The great, greater number of people in the world are attentive to the business of this world. 
What diligence do they not employ to gain a lawsuit or a good position? How many years are adopted? How many measures taken? They neither eat nor sleep. And what efforts do they make to save their souls? All blush at being told that they neglect their family's affairs. And how few are ashamed to neglect the salvation of their souls. Brethren, says St. Paul, we entreat you that you do your own business. That is, the business of your eternal salvation. Quote, the trifles of children, says St. Bernard, are called trifles, but the trifles of men are called business. Unquote. And for these trifles, many lose their souls. If in one worldly transaction you suffer a loss, you may repair it in another. But if you die in enmity with God and lose your soul, how can you repair the loss? Quote, what exchange shall a man give for his soul? Matthew 16, 26. To those who neglect the care of salvation, St. Eucorius says, quote, If thou dost not believe thy Creator, how precious thou art, interrogate thy Redeemer. Unquote. If, far from being created by God to his own image, you do not comprehend the value of your soul, learn it from Jesus Christ, who has redeemed you with his own blood. Quote, you are not redeemed with corruptible things as gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb unspotted and undefiled. 1 Peter 1.18 God, therefore, sets a high value on your soul. Such is its value in the estimation of Satan, that to become master of it, he sleeps not night or day, but is continually going about seeking to make it his own. Hence, St. Augustine exclaims, quote, The enemy sleeps not, and thou dost sleep? Unquote. The enemy is always awake to injure you, and you slumber. Pope Benedict XII, being asked by a prince for a favor he could not conscientiously grant, said to the ambassador, Tell the prince that if I had two souls, I might be able to lose one of them to please him, but since I have only one, I cannot consent to lose it. Thus he refused the favor the prince sought from him. O God, what shall be my lot? Shall I be saved or shall I be lost? I may be either saved or lost. And if I may be lost, why do I not embrace such a life as may secure for me life eternal? O Jesus, thou didst die to save me. Yet I have been lost as often as I have lost thee, my sovereign good. Suffer me not to lose thee any more. Remember that if you save your soul, your failure in every worldly transaction will be but of little consequence. For when you are saved, you shall enjoy complete happiness for all eternity. But if you lose your soul, what will it profit you to have enjoyed all the riches and honors and amusements of this world? For when you lose your soul, all is lost. What doth it profit a man if he gain the world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Matthew 16, 26. But this maxim, St. Ignatius Loyola drew many souls to God, and among them the soul of St. Francis Xavier, who was then at Paris and devoted his attention to the acquirement of worldly goods. One day St. Ignatius said to him, Francis, whom do you serve? You serve the world, a traitor that promises but does not perform. And if it should fulfill all its promises, how long do its goods last? Can they last longer than this life? And after death, what will they profit you if you shall not have saved your soul? He then reminded Francis of the maxim of the gospel, quote, What did the profit a man if he gained the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Quote, but one thing is necessary. Luke 10, 42. It is not necessary to become rich on this earth to acquire honors and dignities but it is necessary to save our souls. Because unless we gain heaven, we shall be condemned to hell. There is no middle place. We must be either saved or damned. God has not created us for this earth. Neither does he preserve our lives here on earth that we may become rich and enjoy amusements. Quote, in the end of life, everlasting. Romans 6, 22. He has created us and preserved us that we may acquire eternal glory. O Jesus, my Redeemer, cast me not away from thy face as I have deserved. I am indeed a sinner, but I grieve from the bottom of my heart for having offended thine infinite goodness. Hitherto I have despised thee, but now I love thee above all things. 
Henceforth thou alone shall be my only good, my only love. Have pity on a sinner who penitently casts himself at thy feet and desires to love thee. If I have grievously offended thee, I now ardently desire to love thee. What would have become of me if thou hadst called me out of life when I had lost thy grace and favor? Since thou, O Lord, hast shown so much mercy to me, grant me grace to become a saint. Spiritual reading. Why stand ye here all the day idle? Gospel of Sunday. St. Philip Neer used to say that, quote, heaven is not for sluggards, unquote, and that he who does not seek the salvation of his soul above all things is a fool. If on this earth there are two classes of people, one mortal and the other immortal, and if the former saw the latter entirely devoted to the acquisition of earthly goods, would they not exclaim, oh, fools that you are, you have it in your power to secure the immense and eternal goods of paradise, and you lose your time in procuring the miserable goods of this earth, which shall end at death? And for these, you expose yourself to the danger of the eternal torments of hell. Leave to us mortals, for whom all shall end at death, the care of these earthly things. But we are all immortal, and each of us shall be eternally happy or eternally miserable in the next life. But the misfortune is, the greater part of mankind is solicitous for the present and never thinks of the future. Oh, quote, oh, that they would be wise and would understand and would provide for their last end. Deuteronomy 32, verse 29. Oh, they that knew about how to detach themselves from present goods, which last but a short time, and to provide for eternity, where there will ne be a never-ending reign in heaven, or a never-ending slavery of in hell. St. Philip Neri, conversing one day with Francis Zazera, a young man of talent, who expected to be make a fortune in the world, said to him, quote, You will realize a great fortune. You will be a prelate, afterwards a cardinal, and in the end, perhaps pope. But what must follow? What must follow? Go, my son, think on these words. Unquote. The young man departed, and after meditating on the words, what must follow, what must follow, he renounced his prospects in this world and gave himself entirely to God. He entered the congregation of St. Philip and died a holy death. Quote, the fashion of this world passeth away. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 31. On this passage, Cornelius Alapide says that, quote, the world is, as it were, a stage, unquote. Happy the man who acts his part well by saving his soul. But if he shall have spent his life in the acquisition of riches and worldly honors, he shall justly be called a fool. And at the hour of death, he shall have earned the reproach addressed to the rich man in the gospel, quote, Fool, this night do they require thy soul of thee. And who shall these things be which thou hast provided? Luke 2, 12, 20. Explaining the words they require, quote, unquote. Toletus says that the Lord has given us our souls that we may guard them against the assaults of our enemies and that at death the angel will come to demand them of us and present them at the tribunal of Jesus Christ. But if we shall have lost our souls by attending only to the acquisition of earthly possessions, these shall belong to us no longer. They shall pass to other hands. And what then become of our souls? Poor worldlings, of all the riches they have acquired, of all the pomps they displayed in this life, what shall they find at death? Quote, they have slept their sleep, and all the men of riches have found nothing in their hands. Proverb, Psalm 75, verse 6. The dream of this present life shall be over at death, and they shall have acquired nothing for eternity. Ask the many great men of this earth, the princes and the emperors, who during life abounded in riches, honors, and pleasures, are and are at this moment in hell. Ask them what now remains of all the riches they possessed in this world. 
They answer with tears, nothing, nothing. And of so many honors enjoyed, of so many past pleasures, of so many pomps and triumphs, ask them now what remains. They answer with howlings, nothing, nothing. Justly then has St. Francis Xavier said that in the world there is but one good and one evil. The one good is the salvation of our souls. The one evil is the losing them. Hence David said, quote, One thing I have asked of the Lord, this I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Psalm 26, verse 4. One thing only have I sought and will forever seek from God, that he may grant me the grace to save my soul. For if I save my soul, all is safe. If I lose it, all is lost for ever. Concluding prayer, I give you thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which I now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will, that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O Triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that, although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I've been, even until now? No. No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more, O Mary. Refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen patria filii, the Spirit through Sancti. Amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.